All right, welcome. This is a tutorial on how and lesson on how to do inverses. Um, well, when you talk about inverses for um, mathematics, there are, I think this is a very interesting topic because many students, the people I talk to, are a little confused. Because in grade school, there are two different inverses that we think of. Or when you hear the word inverse, you think of, hopefully, as I'm writing this down, this is what pops in your mind. Word associated, I say inverse, you think opposite. Opposite. Now, opposite has many different connotations um, that you can find in mathematics and throughout the world. Well, we have to try to understand this, what this opposite means. And you have to know the context, the context of what you're talking about. All right, context is everything. So the first thing is when you're talking about inverses, know the context. All right, you have to know where are we, what are we dealing with. For example, in the early part of your mathematical careers, you probably talked about additive inverses. You learned this in kindergarten, in first, second grade, and this is pretty intuitive because you say, all right, if A is the additive inverse, inverse means opposite of B, then we make it this definition, B plus A has to equal zero. Well, obviously, if you have two inverses, then if I have this example, find the additive inverse of 10, well, it's gonna be the opposite of that, which we call negative 10. That is the inverse. If I had negative four, the opposite or additive inverse of negative four would be four. Because when you add those two together, you get zero, you add these two together, you get zero, and so therefore you know that these are additive inverses. You also have one that's called a multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverses are when you multiply values and what you get then is, all right, what? Well, hopefully this comes to mind because a multiplicative inverse is the reciprocal. Reciprocal, all right, of a number. So three, the uh, or re multiplicative inverse would be one third because three times one third is one. So that's your multiplicative inverse. Negative one fifth would be um, negative five, not the opposite reciprocal, but that would be for slopes and perpendicular lines. But when you multiply these two together, what you then get is one, all right? And that's what you're looking for. Multiplicative inverses are simply just reciprocals, reciprocals. Well, now we get into college mathematics, all right? And um, to this functional inverse. A functional inverse is different because we have to learn a different notation because we're dealing with functions. In a functional inverse, what we have is we are actually composing, composing, all right? Composing two functions together. And what happens when we compose two functions is we actually get x. We get the input. Now that's kind of very important because you see this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, all right, in many different areas of study, all right, especially with computer science, all right, code breaking and whatnot, is that when you compose one function with its uh, functional inverse, you get the input what you plugged into the function. So you get the x value. All right, that's kind of important. So how can you test to see if you have a functional inverse? Well, if these two are inverses of each other, what we have is that means that f composed of g of x should equal x. So to test this out, we're going to go through an example. So I have x cubed, and if I have g of x composed, you know, and that's why you get fog, all right, the composite symbol, all right. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and plug g in for function f. So I'm going to have right here um, the cube root of x. I'm going to cube that. All right, so I'm taking that and plugging it in there. And I get, well, the cube of a cube root is the value inside, which is x. These two are inverses. Now, it's an inverse that they can go the opposite way. So I have g composed of f of x right here. And we should get also x just to make sure that if you compose a function with inverse, it works both ways. All right, now I'm going to take this and I'll write this in red. All right, I'm going to plug that into there now. So then I have the cube root of x cubed, which we know is going to be x as well. And there we just proved it. These two functions are inverses because according to the definition, if we compose two functions with each other, we get the value x inside. That's really important. That's how you can always test algebraically whether two inverses are um, Inverse, or whether two functions are inverse of each other. Compose together, you get out the output. All right, so that's a tutorial on how to identify composite inverses. This is the first in many, so um, 
we'll see you in the next tutorial.